Stand clear of the closing doors, please. I'm standing here on the rooftop garden of the Salesforce Transit Center in San Francisco, where supposedly, once the downtown rail extension goes through, Caltrain will also serve. However, since we aren't living 60 years into the future, we will instead be starting our 77-mile journey here, at San Francisco's 4th and King Station, where in 1998, a time capsule was sunk to be opened in 75 years. San Francisco is also the northern terminus of Caltrain's route and serves as a station with the highest amount of ridership, pulling roughly 15,000 people per weekday in 2018. Moving down the line one stop, we come to 22nd Street, Caltrain's only below grade level station. Next up, Bayshore Station, which is one of two stations with four tracks. Bayshore and Lawrence, the two stations, are built this way to allow BB Bullet services to overtake slower limited expresses. However, the similarities don't stop there. Bayshore and Lawrence both have a freight spur located in close proximity to the platforms. Bayshore Station is named for the nearby Bayshore Roundhouse, which had seen dwindling usage until it was closed in 1982, sold in 1989, and then destroyed by a fire in 2001. Moving on to South San Francisco, which is currently in the process of having a new station built due to the holdout status it has. South San Francisco is one of four Caltrain stations that still has this holdout rule and is also the most frequently used holdout station out of the four. Skipping through San Bruno, that brings us to Millbrae, which was rebuilt in 2003 to the intermodal transit center that we see today. Millbrae's historic depot, however, is placed on the National Register of Historic Places along with seven other depots. Millbrae is going to be the first depot that we talk about today. Millbrae Station is also home to a third platform, which was originally built to, to accommodate any Caltrain short-turn trains that would run to here, Millbrae, and then connect to a BART train to the airport, and then turn back towards San Jose. However, that never really happened, so that's why there is a third platform today that sees very little use. And welcome to Broadway Station, the first of Caltrain's two weekend-only stations, and also a station with a holdout platform. Coming up to Burlingame with the Royal D-Nut, a fairly good donut store. Burlingame is also home to one of the aforementioned historic depots built in the Mission Revival style. Skipping through both San Mateo and Hayward Park because those stations are unimportant and we don't care about them, we come to Hillsdale, which is under construction. Whoopsies. And due to Hillsdale's current deleted status, we come to Belmont, which is not known for much, but Chuck's Donuts is pretty good. Coming up is San Carlos Station, which is home to another one of the seven historic depots. San Carlos Depot is unique in that it is built in the Richardsonian Romanesque Revival style that can be seen quite prominently at Stanford University. And while there may not be anything of great interest at Redwood City, a few miles down, there is. This is why we've come to the Redwood Junction Industrial Park, which is home to two Southern Pacific Bay Window Cabis. Atherton Station, the other weekend-only station, originally known as Fair Oaks, is slated for closure later this year due to its dwindling number of passengers. Of note, it is also a holdout station. Coming into my home station, Menlo Park, we have another one of the historic depots, which now houses my town's Chamber of Commerce. Menlo Park's depot was built in the Victorian style in order to please visitors arriving to Stanford University. And at Palo Alto, a historic stop of Southern Pacific's Coast Daylight train that ran between San Francisco and Los Angeles, you can still see Southern Pacific insignia on the Art Deco station building. A short hop on my bike later, and we are at Stanford Station, open on football game days only. In 1994, it was estimated that 20% of the visitors for the FIFA World Cup arrived through this very station. It is also the only Caltrain station that does not have clipper card readers. And we come to California Avenue, formerly known as Mayfield. This station was the original southern terminus of the San Francisco and San Jose Railroad in the 1860s, before the San Francisco and San Jose Railroad even reached San Jose. Next up, San Antonio, but that's not important, so Mountain View, which, aside from its connection to VTA, is also not important. So we come to Sunnyvale, where if you walk three minutes from the station, there's a rather charming kinetic sculpture within a clock that apparently does not go off at 15 minute intervals like I thought it would. Next stop, Lawrence. Named after the expressway the station sits under, along with its sister Bayshore, Lawrence has a freight spur, though that has long since been abandoned. Arriving at Santa Clara Station, we find the oldest depot west of the Rockies. 
Santa Clara's Depot was opened in 1863, justifiably earning it that title. Coming close to the end of the line for normal service, we have College Park Station, which receives a measly four trains per day. This station exists for Bellarmine Preparatory School and is championed for unsafest platform layout due to the fact that both platforms are situated between active rail lines. College Park is also the last of the four holdout stations we will discuss today. And the last of the Magnificent Seven, San Jose Diridon, has the most transit connections of any Caltrain station in the system. San Jose Diridon has connections to VTA, Amtrak, ACE, and buses to Monterey and Santa Cruz. Fun fact, San Jose Diridon's no smoking signs still show the original Caltrain logo from the early 90s when Caltrain was under the control of Caltrans. Moving further down the line, we get to Tamian, which is my personal favorite Caltrain station. Tamian Station is named after the Tamian Linguistic Division of the Ohlone Native American Tribe. Tamian Station is unique in that while it isn't the only Caltrain station to be constructed by VTA, it is the only one in the same style. Also, it's one of only two Caltrain stations to have escalators. More importantly, the pronunciation of Tamian is up for debate, as VTA announcements announce it as Tamian, whereas Caltrain announcements list it as Tamian. And welcome to Capital Station, Caltrain's least used station with only 71 passengers per weekday on average. Capital is a weekday only service, so trains only stop here Mondays through Fridays. And there are three trains a day heading towards Gilroy and three trains per day heading towards San Francisco. And yes, while other stations may have, uh, may have lower numbers, Capital takes the prize because Capital is the only one served on weekdays as well. So that does it for today. Thank you for watching this first episode of Bay Area Transit Secrets, and I'll see you next time.